Good morning. My name is Ignacio Ramirez. I'll be your moderator for this morning session. And welcome to Archetype Pattern Workshop. This is a school, and it is not a church. And neither we affiliate with a church or a religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational religious and scientific research organization dedicated to proving the existence of Yahweh our Lord and the operation of the eternal pattern, purpose, and plan operating throughout eternity unto this present day. Now, this school is the result of a divine panoramic vision and revelation given to Harry Clifford Kennedy in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. And we have established schools throughout the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. Archetype Pattern Workshop was established in February 2021. Now, in these schools, we use and teach by the true and original name and titles for the Heavenly Father, the Word of Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name for the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title for the Word of Son is Elohim. It also been improperly substituted by God. And the true name for the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God, they are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 5 that there are Lord's men and God's men. We now know that each Lord must have a name, and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. This means that Elohim is the title that our Heavenly Father chose for Himself. Now Jesus is a name, but Jesus is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part into a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce a sound made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the death of the Messiah. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings for the true and original name of our Heavenly Father and His Son. Now Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Now Yahweh is pure spirit and in this state He is incomprehensible, inscrutable, and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh symbolized in his pure spirit state on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose the cloud to symbolize himself because the cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Now Yahweh knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the Word or Son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man but without flesh and blood. Now, this shape and form can only be seen in a divine vision and understood in a divine revelation. Later on, the self same spirit manifests itself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah. The world calls him Jesus Christ. Now, there's only one name given unto salvation, and we all must know this name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior 
during the time that he walked on earth plane. A further understanding of this name and title can be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in the school we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called a divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. Now after Yahweh led the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses on top of Mount Sinai and showed them a tabernacle pattern in a vision. And he instructed Moses to build it exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. Now this pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. And we go forth in the school to prove that everything in the universe moves and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Now the ten aims of the school are as follows. One is to help you find and know Yahweh or Elohim as it really is and as it actually exists. Two is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without the distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. And fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstitions, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. And seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan, and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. And eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation of faith that was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. And ninth is to make known that Yahweh, from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the newer state. Our watchword is peace, and our slogan speak the truth. This morning our prayer by Dr. Ray Ramirez, the scripture lesson is 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter. Our scripture would be Dr. Annette Ramirez. And we have a selection of music after the prayer. We'd like to welcome everybody here and around the world to our class this morning. And we'd like to ask Yahweh our Elohim to give us the understanding and knowledge that we need and to spark that fire that's in us. We know that's in us. Spark it up so we can get on with this day by day world. And we ask this in your son's name, Yahshua Messiah. Let us all say, Hallelujah.
Good morning, class. Good morning. My name is Annette Ramirez, and I'll be reading out of the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testament, critically compared with ancient authority and various manuscripts, revised by the late A.P. Trina. I'll be reading 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Savior, Yahshua, the Messiah, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled neither by, by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of the Messiah is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called Elohim, or that is worshipped, so that he as the Almighty sitteth in the temple of Yahweh, showing himself that he is the Mighty One. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now restraineth will restrain until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom Yahshua shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, Yahweh shall send them strong delusion that they should belie believe a lie, that they all might be judged who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in right unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to Yahweh for you, brethren beloved of Elohim, um, brethren beloved of him, because he hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth, whereunto him he called you by our evangel to the obtaining of the glory of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the truth which ye have been taught whether by word or by or our epistle. Now our Savior Yahshua, the Messiah himself, and Yahweh, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. I have read Second Thessalonians, the second chapter. Let us all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning once again for those that just tuned in. Uh, well, yeah, I was going to say that our hearts go out to those people in the south of the, at, uh, where the tornadoes hit and leveled out the places. Okay, uh, hopefully there's a uh, brother that are, are not out there and they're in safe hands. Okay, uh, today's special day. We have a visitor from Chicago. Okay. She is uh, known in the, in, in the entertainment field and also in the political field. At this time, I'd like to call up uh, Valencia Gensler. Oh, yeah. No, not yet. <laughs> I want to stay clean. 
show the people that cleanliness is next to Yahwehness. <laughs> okay. You guys can hear me okay? Yes. Okay, good morning. Good morning. I'm so excited to be here. I'm Dr. Valencia Renee Danzler. And today is a very special day. This month is a very special month because this is the month that I walked into this beautiful teaching 30 years ago. So this is my 30th anniversary in this class. In this teaching, it saved my life. You know, just, I was 22 years old, living in Los Angeles. I moved here from Chicago to pursue my dream in entertainment, to make films and television production. And my friend Carly Lee, she's watching. She's in Lancaster. She couldn't be here today. She was actually working, funny story, she used to work in the corporate office of Fredericks of Hollywood, which, you know, for those of you who may or may not know, was a lingerie place <laughs> on Hollywood Boulevard. And a lady she worked there with, because they were in corporate, so they handled the administrative work. Her name was Dolores. And Dolores invited her to come to class. And I had been doing some research because I met a lady who told me that God's name was Yahweh. She was Jewish or Yehuda, because there's no J in there. Hebrew language. Right. And she said, anything that you want, you ask for it in the name of Yahweh. So I've been, you know, hearing this. And I, I, call, I told Carlita, because I was 22 and Carlita's seven years older than me, so she was 29. This was in 1993. And I said, you know, I, I, I've been hearing that God's name is Yahweh. And she said, yeah, I've been hearing that too. And um, she said, I got invited to this class. Do you want to go? And I said, yeah, I would like to figure this out. So I was also attending the um, Church of God. And this was a Christian organization, and I had met a lot of these people, and I went to their Bible study. And, I started asking questions. I said, well, you know, I heard it was 26 chapters dropped from the original text. You know, how do we know this is true? And, you know, all they could say is, well, you just have to believe and trust that it's true. It's like there's, it was, they didn't really, like, try to prove it to me. So, the one thing that I can say, the only one that can prove himself to you is Yahweh. So there was this store on the corner of Willoughby and La Brea, because I used to live um, off of, I lived around Hollywood a little bit. I lived off of Alta Vista over there, where Pink's, yeah, I used to live there, you know, I'm sure you can tell. <laughs> a lot of Pink's. So what happened was, now it's a 99 cent store, but back then it was a store called Bargain Circus, which was basically like a 99 cent store. And I had all these bags, and I didn't want to walk home with them. And I said, okay, look, God, if your name is Yahweh, I want somebody to pull up to this corner and give me a ride home. So I'm looking around, you know, because I'm challenging Yahweh. So I'm looking around. So then all of a sudden, somebody walks up to me, hey girl, how you doing? And I turn around, and it's the girl from the Church of Christ. And I said, do you have a car? She said, yes. I said, can you give me a ride home? She said, yeah. I was like, I almost faded. <laughs> Lenora Allen about this. She said, you should have asked if Denzel Washington drive 
in a limousine. <laughs> you know, Lenora, she's so funny. So I told Carlita, I said, Carlita, you're not going to believe what happened. I said, look, let's go to that class. And so the class was um, on Riverside in, in uh, Los Feliz, on Riverside Drive. So this is like a death because my life was beginning. Everything that I knew I had learned, no, 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 <laughs> it was wrong. So I remember the day, it was March of 1993, I walk into this class, this school is huge. I mean, it was this huge room and it had all these charts. I mean, from the door all the way around. I mean, I mean this, this place was big. It had to be like five, six, seven hundred people in that class. It was huge. I had never seen anything like it. And as soon as I walked in, and I'm like, oh my God, I, I walked into heaven. What is this? Because the only thing that you recognize, if this is your first time, this is the chart that you'll recognize. Mm -hmm. Because that's what's in the world. Right. We call this our cardinal ordinance chart. But it's Jesus on the cross. That's what they know. It's Jesus on the cross. That's all you know. They walked us up to the front because all the visitors sit in the front. And we sat down. And they went through the moderation. The choir saw the choir was, I mean, they was jamming. That left Los Angeles choir was amazing. Keep in mind, I'm 22. I'm the young girl. I know I still look 22. Anyway, <laughs> so what happened was they sat me down. Can somebody get that? That chart is way over there. I need the uh, Tabernacle of Man chart. You need to bring that up front because I am mean, No, just go over there. Okay. That's fine. I can go over there. I just need to move it out of the way. So when I, when I first came into class, and they, we were all in the front, they sat me down, and I was facing this chart. And the moderator said, our speaker for this evening is a licensed medical doctor, Dr. Robert Harris. Dr. Harris got up, and he went over this tabernacle pattern, and he compared it to the physical body. And I had never in my life heard anything right. like that. And when it was over, I just stood up and said, I'm home. This was it for me. And my life had started over. And I went on this journey for 30 years. And I had my ups and downs. I went through all of this. I went through darkness. I went through the wilderness. I went to the Canaan land, up and down, ascending to descending. And when I tell you, I fell so deep in love with this gospel that I ordered textbooks, I got pamphlets, uh, I got the Bible. I was going to class almost every day. We had class on Tuesdays. We had class on Thursdays. We had auxiliary class on Friday. On Wednesday was Young Adele class. And Sunday was by, uh, a Sunday school, a regular class. I went five days a week. I was so in love with this teaching. Keep in mind, I was innocent in this garden. And then here come the lies. I am in the truth. I know I'm the truth. And then they, they lied to me and said the world was going to end in 1996. Then they started talking all this stuff. And I felt myself slowly backing away because I'm like, I know this is the truth. Then I started having dreams about Dr. King. Dr. Kelly would come in my dream and he said, I want you to read. He would tell me what to read. He said, I want you to read the 10th chapter of Jeremiah. I didn't know what it was. I read it. That was about the Christmas tree. Then he asked me to read um, 
the Adamic transgression. It was one of his, it was two transcripts. And he told me, he said, I want you to listen to me. And I was, and, you know, because I'm like, it's Dr. Kenley. I'm like, oh my, I was like, and, and, and in my dream, I'm talking to him and I'm like, ooh, it's such an honor to meet you. He said, no, it's an honor to meet Yasha. He, he, he kept it off of himself. He kept it off of himself. So I remember coming home, going because I would go back and forth from Chicago to LA because I was still living here. And I kind of I went to visit those classes. And back here, and it was just so weird how they were doing stuff. They had a convention. And they wanted everybody to stay at the hotel. I'm like a young girl in college. I'm not paying. I can drive. You know, it's like they've been doing a lot of weird stuff. And I just was like, something is weird about this. So then Yahweh moved me home in 99. I was in LA from, remember, I moved here at 17 by myself. He was protecting me all that time. 17 year old girl from Chicago in Hollywood. I never got into trouble. I went to college. I did what I was supposed to do. Yeah, I got involved in some shady stuff. I ain't gonna lie. I did some old crazy stuff, you know. And he moved me back home in 99 and I started going to Chicago class. And what I was learning there, they was teaching me Yashua. They was teaching me Yashua. You know, I, this picture of Yashua on the cross See, this is what the world knows. But these are things that Yahshua, when he was walking around with his disciples, because Yahshua is not about death. Yahshua is about life. But we are so bombarded and we've learned to accept this image. See, I work in entertainment. Everything is publicity and image. This is the image of our creator that got in the body. When we think about Yahshua or in the world Jesus, the first thing that pops into our mind, a dead body on the cross. We never think about, oh, he's with John being baptized. He's helping people. He's uh, uh, the Passover. We don't get those images. All of Fun stuff he did, you know, turning water into wine. You know, comedians talk about this all the time. He's like, Jesus is keeping the party going. Turn the water into wine. You know, let's have a party. We don't get that image. All we see is this, to the point that people wear this. They wear this on their neck. And then they wear crosses without a body. I, I used to do it too. And I remember uh, Frank. What's Frank's last name in class? Frank Lewis. Dr. Frank Lewis asked me one time, he said, why are you wearing those crosses? His wife asked me too. What's her name? Frank's Valerie. Valerie. She said, well, Lindsay, why are you wearing crosses on your, your, your ears? Because even though I had been in class, there was still a lot of stuff I was ignorant to. You can come down here for 30 years and still be ignorant to certain things because it's so much to know. And I said, well, I don't know. I just, you know, it represents Yahweh, I guess. Do your homework. And I learned that this was a form of punishment, being nailed to the cross. There were several crucifixions before Yahshua got on the cross. This is how they executed people at that time. It's just like me wearing a, a noose or an a, a little electric chair on a, on a chain. Now, if I walked around like that, people would think, well, what? is she crazy? They don't, get, don't even get the racism going. Like, why is she, she, she wearing a noose? Is that Emmett Till? You know, it's this big this movie Till about how he was killed, this little boy, and his mother wanted the casket open so they could so people could see 
And it was a lie that got him killed. If, if I did that, I would be persecuted. But this is accepted. See? You see the hypocrisy in that? People walking around now, the, the LGBTQ community has taken over the world. I, I love that community, because you always say love everybody, but I'm tired of going into the restaurants in different places, and I got to go in the bathroom, and there's the toilet, there's the baby changing station, and then it's the man's room. Because this community wants to put up a new title, non binary or whatever it's called. It's on applications now. Okay, where you don't have to claim either sex, male or female, or you can be both. Well, we're all, we're, we're all both anyway. Okay, but at the end of the day, when they put you in jail, <laughs> you know, it, 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 it's going to come. I mean, this, we have just, if now, if you say anything negative about that community, if you say anything negative about the Yehudas, which is Jewish people, which if you do some research, you will find that the word Jewish came from France. So here is a, a group of people who Yahweh had chosen, allowing another group of people to dictate what they should be called. And you can talk to any person that is Hebrew or Jewish, and they will tell you there is no J in the Hebrew language. Well, if there's no J in the language that you've been taught, you've read the Torah, you do the carnal ordinances, you circumcise your son on the eighth day, why are you allowing somebody to call you out of what your true title is? See, no one has expressed that. They running around mad at Kanye West because he said something negative about them, which was just a plan to get out of a contract. But no one wants to talk about the fact that that is not their chosen title. Where's the truth? What is our slogan here? Our watchword is peace. Our slogan is what? Speak, Speak the truth. But people don't want to deal with the truth. And in honor of my 30th anniversary, I want to go over what I was taught. And that's this time. Dr. Harris got on the floor 30 years ago. I was a young girl. He went over this tabernacle. So we're going to start. Exodus, uh, where it says, that build me a sanctuary. Is that 24? And I'll dwell among them. We'll briefly go over this. Because we have to get scriptorial references so you guys will understand and know that this tabernacle is in over 50 chapters in that Bible. Go ahead. Exodus 25 and, uh, I'm sorry, 8. 25 and 8. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Let me make me a sanctuary that I may, that this is Yahweh talking to who, Moses? Okay, keep going. According to all that I showed thee, after the pattern of the tabernacle, and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall you make it. Okay, well, I'm here. Yahweh had called Moses into this mountain and showed him this tabernacle. And he turned himself into himself. And it took him seven days to do it. It did not take... Yahweh, seven days to create the creation. It took him seven days to show Moses a rerun. That's what we watch on TV a lot. We look at reruns. You looking at a rerun of something that came out 50 years ago. Okay, so drop down to 40. 25 and 40 of Exodus. And look that thou make them after their pattern, which was shown to thee in the mountain. He showed him this pattern in the mountain. And he was up there 40 days and 40 nights. And he basically fast. There wasn't no food or drink up there. Yahweh kept him full because he was giving him this vision. See? 
And he wasn't up there alone and by himself. He was up there with Yahshua, which the one we call Jesus. And so we said, well, how did you get that? Because when he came in this body, he was coming to fulfill. Right. When he came in the body of Yahshua or Joshua, the son of Nun, that was the institution. Because he, I need the scripture where it says, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, which means he's the beginning and the end. And then I'm going to start with this pattern so I can get through it. Let me know when you have it. So. Hebrews 12 and 1. Okay. And I also need your body as a temple of holy. Is that 1 Corinthians 6, 19? I need that one too. We'll get this first. Hebrews 12 and 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience and race that is set before us, looking unto Yahshua, the author and the finisher of our faith. Okay, so he is the author and the finisher of our faith, which means he is the beginning and the end. Go on. Well, oh, 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 she, she got the others. First Corinthians 6, 19, okay. First Corinthians 6 and 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit which is what? in you? What? Know ye not that your body, your physical body, is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Right. You can also see a spiritual principle in that. Because we're also spiritual bodies. Because your soul is your invisible part. Right. That's why when a person takes off the flesh and what person say die, you can't see them because the soul is invisible to the naked eye. Right. But you can certainly feel them. Dr. Kenley, who started this teaching, Yahshua gave him this vision. He said the room is full. He used to walk down the street and he stepped over something that he did it like this. And so they looking at him like, what is what does he see? He's stepping over fleshly souls. And he, he would do that as a, to show a, a make a point. It was a principle in that. You think you're alone, but you're really not. You are not alone. <laughs> so you're not alone. The, the room is full. So this tabernacle. We'll start in the most holy place. It has an Ark of the Covenant, and it has two archangels, Michael and Gabriel, and it has the Ten Commandment Law in the Ark of the Covenant. It has seven laws on one side, three on the other. Now, Michael was a warrior, and Gabriel was the town crier. He ran his mouth. <laughs> he keep talking about giving and receiving of messages. He was a messenger. Michael was the action angel. Now, if you compare that to your brain, you have two functions of your brain. You have motory and sensory. Motor and sensory. One is for movement, and the other one is giving and receiving of messages. In your pituitary gland, it secretes ten hormones, just like it was a Ten Commandment law here. Those hormones are the law of your body. Okay? And everything starts here. See? We talked about, a lot of times I've been into the neurotransmitters, which is the invisible chemicals to tell your body what to do. These, these are all part of the law. See? There's a blue, purple, and scarlet veil that separates the most holy place from the holy place. This is what I learned when I first walked in the door 30 years ago. Your blood is blue before it hits the oxygen. It's red when it hits the oxygen. And you have, your iodine sustains your thyroid. Right. And that's purple. And I know it's purple because I take iodine. In fact, a lot of us need to be taking more iodine because it is there benefits your thyroid. And oftentimes, people who have lupus or 
uh, thyroid cancer is due to an issue with iodine levels. So you have you want to look into that. You come on down, you have seven branch candlestick. You have a table with two bread. Step back to the Step other side. Step back on the other side. Okay. And you have an altar of incense. And you can read this stuff. It's on the chart. Now, I want to talk about this altar of incense because it had four ingredients, which was anica, stacte, gabinol, and frankincense. And that is compared to the four. And these are your lungs. And you see, you got two lobes, like it was the high priest and Gabriel right here. And you can actually see the cloud of incense going up. There's a reason why this incense was in here, and I'll get into that. That's a comparative analysis to your lungs. Your lungs pump four main ingredients, actually it's ten, but the main ones would be hydrogen, <coughs> oxygen, uh, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and ar argon. Carbon dioxide is what we breathe out. I'm talking about what we breathe into the breath of life. But somebody else said, what's what? carbon dioxide? I'll get into that. The interesting thing about these incense is that they have health benefits. Annika was used in World War II in over 200 hospitals. It has cardiovascular benefits, blood sugar, helps sinus problems, and bronchitis. You can get it in essential oil. Now you could compare that one to nitrogen because the nitrogen is used to make nitroglycerin. And that's for the heart. A lot of people don't know that. This is what, it's, what it came from. So these incense that was in here, you could compare, if you do some really deep research, you can compare each incense to each uh, ingredient that you breathe. Your oxygen helps with circulation. Argon helps you with asthma and respiratory problems. There's an argon oil that you can get. A lot of times we have things in our body, but you can actually get more of it. Our body makes glutathione. You can get more of that because it, that's what it needs, going back to the, to, to the uh, iodine. So, stat, statte, which is a, a form of myrrh, is good for skin. It kills bacteria and other uh, pathogens. Galbanon is good for muscle spasms and digestion. Frankincense is anti-cancer. It helps arthritis, also gut function. See, so you can literally see the benefits of this incense and compare it to the elements that you breathe for your lungs. Now, we breathe out carbon dioxide. We get this stuff from the trees. That's why the trees are so important. They get our carbon dioxide and we get, we, man and tree work together. That's why in the scripture, if you want to get that, he said, he, the man said, I see men as trees walking because that's our other counterpart. We would not be able to survive this atmosphere if we had no trees. That's why plants are so important. That's why a plant-based diet heal, can heal a lot of us. So this is, this is your four chambers of the heart. You had the table of shoe bread, the seven branch candlestick. You have seven uh, branches. You look up the heart and the parts of the heart, you can compare that to coming on down to the court roundabout. Now what Dr. Kinley did and Dr. Harris did, your kidneys are actually one on each side in the back. 
He brought them together in a circular motion to, sh to do a comparative analysis to the brazen labor because your kidneys clean your blood. Right. If your kidneys are not functioning, you're on a kidney machine. You ought to go to dialysis. You can't have poison in your body like that. That's why it's important to drink a lot of water because you know what happens? If a person is on dialysis, they can't drink that much water. They're all supposed to have a cord. And you can't have vitamin C if you on dialysis. This is what I'm saying. I'm talking to myself because my weight has gone up and down and I've done plant-based diets. A lot of times you're straight, you know, Chicago, the food is the devil. Everything, this is why everybody is so fat. You know, California, I probably need to spend a little bit more time out here. People are more health conscious. Okay, now going back to the reason why this was so important. When the children of Israel would come, this was the gate. They would come and they would put um, the um, animals or whatever they need. If they sinned, they had to sacrifice an animal. Okay, so they would put, the animals would be uh, put on this and they had the uh, priests, they had to clean these animals, they had to cut them open, they had all this blood going on. That's, that's bacteria and smells. So that's why they had this incense. See, and the incense had ingredients in it that kills bacteria. All you have to do is look up the benefits of all of this stuff. And that compares to the colon. You see you have four points of blood on this altar of sin sacrifice. Whatever you eat, it gets into your colon. So the colon is ascending, transverse, descending, and sitting. And it's interesting how this pattern is ascending, descending, so is your colon. And do you understand that if your colon is messed up, everything else in your body, there is a brain-gut connection. And most people don't know this, but your serotonin, which is one of your neurotransmitters that keep you balanced, 90% of it is made in your gut. This is very important. And what Yashua just showed me the principle. He said, look, they sacrifice these animals here. And he said, if you really want to get healthy, you're going to have to sacrifice that animal, which we don't want to give up that meat. <laughs> and it's hard. And I noticed that when I did stop eating meat and I was only eating fruits and vegetables, I felt a lot better. And it was just Yashua showing. I mean, even if you go back in the garden with Cain and Abel, you know, some days Yashua liked me, some days he was a vegetarian, he was moody. You know, he, it was whatever he was in the mood for. But for the most part, and then there's certain meat. You know, if you look at what Yahshua ate, you know, he didn't eat a whole lot of that. He didn't eat no meat. You know, whenever I would, like sometimes I like to get me a little sausage pizza. You know, Chicago got good pizza. And Yahshua like, you know, I don't eat that. You know, I feel the spirit looking at me. He said, you know, I don't eat that. <laughs> you know, and so he tells me. You know, so, and I, lamb, you know, it's good meat, like, you know, or, and it's organic. The best time to do it is organic. But the whole point of this is to see how your body is made in the likeness and image of Yahweh Elohim. Right. That, that is what the most important thing is. See, and Yahweh is everything. He's the chair. He's everything, inanimate, an animal. He's everything. That chair got stripped. If I sit in that chair, I weigh 300 pounds. If I sit in that chair, that chair is strong enough to hold me. Surprisingly enough. That means the chair has an attribute of strength. It has an attribute of power. It has an attribute of foundation. So everything that is created is Yahweh in a shape and form of something. And you have a question? Go ahead. Yeah, um, I remember hearing this in school, but uh, I don't know like first year or anything, but um, when you mentioned the veil, the blue, purple, and scarlet, mm -hmm. I remember hearing that, you know, the blood itself, the red blood cells carry oxygen and other ingredients within the blood. Mm -hmm. So, I, and I also remember hearing that when blood You want to put the camera on me now? Turn it on. So people can see you. 
He needs a microphone. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, the red blood cells would carry the oxygen and other chemicals, you know, to flow through the blood to yeah. keep it lively and moving, keep up the red blood pressure. But um, I also heard that the blue turning to red, mm -hmm. it was a myth because the red blood cells already carried the oxygen. So I don't know, like, I'm not. Look at your veins. Like, but yeah. They're blue. Mm -hmm. If you look at them, well. they're blue. And I'm glad you brought that up because now that is something that we can research. Well, I think in the in the medical files, it's, it's medically depicted as blue. Right. So to show for deoxygenated blood. Okay. That's why it's like that in the medical books. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes. And, and another thing that I, I want to say because. Remember, these are pictorial illustrations, okay? If you look at this, this, oh, I'm sorry, Will, you say stay on this side. If you look at this, see, the children of Israel, they never saw what was in here. They would just bring their animals and that's it. So a, a lot of what we are learning about our physical body in terms of pictorial illustrations, if you go past that, like, Yahweh Elohim is the body of heaven in his clearness. But on this chart, he looks brown. <laughs> because we have to be able to see this stuff. So what you're saying, we have to research that because it could be correct. But for visual purposes, you know, the medical professionals and the scientists come up with something to, where people can understand. And they're not always right. <laughs> They're not always right either. So, yeah. And, like, for example, most of us don't know this, but when you see, you actually see backwards until Yahweh right. flips it for you to see, see straight. But he does it so fast, it's instantaneous. You don't even know what's happening. And I learned that from a teacher who teaches optics. You know, there's so much in this but the beauty of it, this is something, and I'm not trying to put the church down, because the church helps a lot of people. They feed folks, they give folks clothes, shoes, they pay you bills. I'm not putting the church down. But this is something, truth be told, you will not learn this in church. Right. You, this is a, that's why we say this is a school and not a church. We come here to learn about our Heavenly Father. But I appreciate you sharing that because that prompts me to go look that up. But you also got to keep in mind, too, they will tell, the powers that be want to tell you stuff is a myth, <laughs> okay? You know, they said Jesus was a myth. The only thing mythical about him was the name, you know? They said, oh, that, that didn't happen, that didn't exist, the world is billions of years old. No, it's not. Dr. Kelly never taught that. And, and let me say this, what I like about this school is that we also talk about our founder in human form. Yahshua was in the body, but he was still human. And Dr. Kelly still made some, he made mistakes. He had a lot of regrets. He said that he regretted a lot of things because of the way the people look. The same thing that happened out here and even in here. Moses told these people, Joshua told them, and what did they do? They still went and was disobedient. When they came out of here, and what happened? When they were drowned in the Red Sea, the, the, the spirits, the evil spirits that was in them, they didn't do nothing but jump into them. That's what happened. Because they did everything opposite of what Yahweh told them to do. And I'm not fussing at them, because we've done it too. You know, Yahweh will tell us something, we won't even listen. And then we get in trouble, oh, we should have listened. We are just, we, th these are our ancestors. We're just as hard-headed and stiff-necked as they are. Okay, so everything is a repeat. All these things that are going on now. Matthew, the 24th chapter, talked about all of this. Earthquakes, famines. Floods, we got tornadoes. It was a tornado in Montebello. You know, somebody told me, Are you sure you want to keep it? I said, Well, I'm on the train now. I can't make the train turn around. You know, I, it's like, 
I just have to roll with it. The, because we have, remember, there are scientists and people in the universe messing with stuff. They're going up there and they're messing with things. And when you mess with Yahweh's stuff, all this other stuff happens. So yeah, there's natural disasters. I didn't know if you know the story about the men who tried to get climbed down there in Noah's Ark. They fell to their death. Noah's Ark landed on Mount Arat, which is modern day Turkey. And people were trying to go in there, they're trying to find it, they're trying to dig, you know, just like that movie, Raiders of the Lost Ark. They're always trying to mess with his stuff. But Yahweh, in his intelligence, he fixed it so you can go to certain points of him and test stuff out, which still can be dangerous. But the one place you ain't going to get is close to this sun because you get burned up. And this sun is a representation of this sun, which was in that body. And that, that, is, the, that is our guiding light. There was a soap opera called Guiding Light. This is our guiding light. He lives in us. And the most important thing is for us to apply what we learn in this school to our daily lives. Let Yahshua be your guide. And you can't let him do anything. It's not like you, we don't have any power. It's him doing it. In everything you do, I don't care what it is. I have gotten on the phone with folks, and I said, in the name of Yahshua, you're going to do it. You're going to do what thus saith Yahweh, I'm telling you. And, you know, I use him every step of the way. When I have some problem, I'm like, Yahshua, get your demons. Get your demons, Yahshua, please, before I go to jail in here. Get your demons, you know. Every step of the way, it is amazing. And miraculous things will happen. We don't use our brain power enough. We have so much of all of this in our brain, and a lot of times we just don't use it. This is the truth. Yahweh has given you everything you need to know to be safe. Who knew? Who knew? That all these ingredients in here, this was mind blowing to me when, 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 when we were in the car talking about it. I said, This is mind blowing. Frankincense, which was given to Yahshua, is anti cancer. Like, who knew that? And the nitrogen that we breathe was used to make nitroglycerin. That's what they'll give you if they think you're going to have a heart attack or you're having a heart attack. And some of y'all may, may not know this. Cayenne pepper, if somebody's having a heart attack or stroke, just give them some cayenne pepper with some water and stop immediately. That's a spice. What, didn't they have all these herbs and spices back then? Is that where Colonel, the KFC man got it from? Herbs and spices. He puts, he puts little signs in the universe. And I want to end with this, because one of the brethren remembered my speech. There was a TV show called Charlie's Angels. Right. Was three three women who were angels, and there was Charlie. You never saw Charlie. Right. You only heard his voice, cause you couldn't see him, and he was the boss giving all the orders to the angels. And then he had his assistant Bosley. See, Yahweh just put it. He just puts it. He puts it in, in, in so some interesting forms. But if you're not spiritually inclined, you wouldn't even see that. You gotta see those 40 year principles. You gotta see those 50 year principles. When I was looking at the, the, the uh, earthquake, I mean the earthquake, the tornado, it had the number 50 in it. It said it was 110 uh, kilometers or yards or something. I said, there go Joseph and Joshua right there. Every time some, something like that happens, I look at that. And we have so many 40-year principles. When, when Barack Obama became president, it had been 40 years from the time that Martin Luther King had been assassinated. And his, he was, his hand, they swore me in on Martin Luther King's Bible. 
which Martin Luther King was kind of like a type, we, Will and I was talking about this the other night. Uh, he's like a type of Moses because he started talking about the promised land. And then, and so Will said, well, who would have been Joshua? Jesse Jackson? And so we started talking about that. And if you go and look at the principles, you can see the repeats just in the people, you know, like in Chicago. In 1979 was the last time we had a female mayor. Forty years later, we got a female mayor. So I'm looking at that principle, that pattern. Now we have another mayor, a man running for mayor who was African American, and it's been 40 years since we had an African American male mayor. So Yahweh may do something there too. Well, I don't live in Chicago, so it's their problem. I live in the suburbs because I don't want to live around all that violence. Right. So I'm bougie. I'm in the suburbs. It's quiet. I have my, my male. My mayor is female. So, but yeah, it, it's it's gotten so bad. I mean, children carjacking people, 12, 13 year olds. And where are they learning this stuff from? Grand Theft Auto. You know, they have videos to teach you how to drive a car. These kids out here stealing stuff. You know, this is the world we live in because why? Image is image. It's what they see. It's what they learn. Going back to what I said earlier, that image. And, and Yahshua told me, he said, I hate that picture. <laughs> he said, because that's how people see me. He said, I am alive. I live in you. Most people are just not conscious of that. Right. You cannot break up the unity of the spirit. This is Yahweh manifesting spirit. This is Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua are one. Right. This pure spirit got in a shape and form and became Yahweh, Elohim, and as I was taught, and I taught, was taught this by Dr. Harris. He went out of the creating business as Yahweh and got in the business of creating from as, as Elohim. So this was a death. Mm -hmm. So because every time you come down, it's a death. So Yahweh took on shape and form, Yahweh Elohim, that's what created everything else in the creation. And then the creation got inside his creation. All of them. All of them. Start here. With Adam and Eve. He, she was in him. This is where we do this male and female. She was living inside of him. Right. And he what? He had to put him in a deep sleep. That's a death-like state. And when he woke up, oh, who are you? Oh, you know, oh there you are. That's a wife. Okay. It goes all the way back. And you see, what's it? They were in this garden with what? Plants, trees, the breath of life. He said he breathed his nostrils. See, most people think in their mind, mouth to mouth resuscitation, like God just breathed. No, he inhaled. Yahweh on him got in this man, took a breath, inhaled. And they had all those trees around. Plant-based diet. <laughs> what, what, what was, what, what was the, the vegetable that got him in trouble? They had all of he didn't eat no steak. He pulled it from the tree. And what you have to, I want to get that real quick and I'm, I'll be down. Give me Genesis where Eve, it says that, I think it's the third chapter because a lot of people skip over this. When, when Satan was talking to Eve. watching this, Eve is having a conversation with Lucifer, who showed up not looking evil or whatever, but was a beautiful angel. Go ahead and read it. Genesis 3 and 1. I'll start with you. Okay. Now the serpent was more subtile than the, any beast of the field, which Yahweh Elohim had made. Subtile being slick Sneaky, mm -hmm. you know, just like they sneak this dead body cross and sell all these cross necklaces like that. Go ahead. And he said unto the woman, 
Hath Elohim said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, in the midst of the garden, Elohim said, Ye shall not eat of it, but we'll die. Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So don't touch, don't eat. Okay, go ahead. And the serpent said unto the woman, No death will you die. That or was a lie right there. And I'm going to show you something. That conversation was sexual assault. He was raping her mind. Keep going. For Elohim doth know that in the day ye eat of thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as Elohim, knowing good and evil. Now what did I tell you when I first walked in this class? I sat down, I learned this stuff, and I realized it was the truth. But what did those people in LA do to me? They used the truth to deceive me. That is exactly what Satan is doing. He's telling her the truth, but he's manipulating her because he's using the truth to deceive her. First he told her, well, you ain't going to die. But, yeah, they did die. They may not. See, he, he, he mixed the lies with the truth. They didn't die a physical death. Well, no, you're not going to die. Meaning, oh, you ain't going to die physically, but what's going to happen? You're going to lose your place in heaven, you're going to die spiritually. See, that's that fine print. When you go buy a car and the print's so fine, and you don't know what you're really signing because you're so small, you can't even read it, you got to put your reading glass on. That's how they do you. That's how they get you. Go ahead. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. Now, now see, I want you to be, re this is very, very important because it's, 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 Sections is adjectives to describe something. When the woman saw that it was good for food, go ahead. And that it was pleasant to the eyes. It was pleasant to the eyes, so we got good and pleasant, okay? And a tree to be desired to make one wise. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. See? All of those put together. That's just like this pattern. All of it put together. Go ahead. She took of the fruit thereof. She took of the fruit thereof. And did eat. She did eat. Stop. She ate. Nothing happened. Until. Keep going. And gave also unto her husband with her. You want some, baby? You eat this. Go ahead. And he did eat. That's when it happened. Go ahead. And the eyes of them both were opened. Both of them had to eat because they were one. Right. Not, if, if, if she ate by herself, well, well, nothing gonna happen. this was a collective falling because it's a collective salvation. And what happened? He and, ate. And they knew that they were naked. And they knew they were naked because they ate. Here's, here's what I want you to get out of that. If you go to Ralph's and buy some olives, you're not gonna, that's not gonna happen. Right. It was all that crap that Satan said to her because it was a conversation. And it's to prove that this was a satanic rape when Eve, when they were put out of the garden, when Eve got pregnant, the first baby she had was Cain. Cain was satanic. That was really in principle. It was Adam's son physically, but spiritually, that was the devil because he had all he got in her mind before they had conceived that baby. But the next child they had, Abel, that was Yahshua. And what had to happen to Abel? He had to be killed. He had to be sacrificed. So she had another baby, Seth, that we put. Adam and Eve, I mean, they was busy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they were still in a part of the garden, they just wasn't in that part no more. You know, if you had that, I mean, California's a garden. You know, they just wasn't in that part no more. 
But the point of this is to, when people get inside your mind, they will say stuff to scare you. They'll say stuff to get inside your mind. They put fear in you. The only one you need to fear is Yahshua. And that means respect. You cannot let all these people tell you. That's why, the re, one of the reasons why a lot of people die of cancer is because the doctor's going to say, I'm so sorry, but you only have six months to live. And you believe that. That's, and this is six months you're dead because you, you, you ate that. There are a lot of people the doctor told they had six months to live. They live another 10 years. But they, for that, that first six months, they were scared to death. Because this is the part, I'm not saying don't listen to your doctor. But guess what? I got 10 doctors that I talk to. Most of them are holistic. Some of them are medical. Because you're not going to tell me, like the doctor told me, well, you have a, you're pre-diabetic. Let me put you on this metaphor. I said, pre mean I'm close. That don't mean I have it. I said, lady, I can reverse that with garlic. She said, fine. Go do that. I ate garlic every night for three months while I was 40 pounds, and my A1C dropped from 6.3 down to 5.7, I walked back in her office. She said, I'm going to put you on the wall. You are my star patient. After she tried to get me to take that medicine. And I would have never known anything about it had Yahshua led me to the people that taught me these things. This has been popping my head. This is like Moses. Moses was in the wilderness for 40 years. He walked. You cannot walk back into Egypt and just walk into the palace and say, let my people go. He knew these people. They were aware of who he was. You just can't just walk up into that. That was that it reminded me. We were talking about this Whitney Houston movie came out. Uh, Sissy Houston, Whitney Houston's mother, she used to sing back up for Elvis Presley. A lot of people didn't know that. Clive Davis was the one who got Whitney the deal. The point is, you have to know somebody to become that grand. She knew, her mother knew the right people to turn her into what she was. She just didn't come on the scene like that. Moses had been down there. You can't just walk up. None of us can just walk up into the White House and tell, tell Joe Biden, you suck. You know, you got to have clearance and know somebody to know somebody to get up in there and have a meeting with him. Moses was already set up for that. See, a lot of people think, oh, he just going around, just like when Yahshua when he was healing people by touch. You could do the same thing if you learn the principles of touch. It's called acupressure. Will's been in the military. Some military people could attest to this. When you're trained as a Navy SEAL or someone in the military, they teach you how to use your fingers where you could take your fingers and puncture somebody in their heart. They will drop dead. They, they teach you how to kill with your hand. But you can also learn how to heal with your hand. One of my doctors in Chicago, Dr. Frank, the man was deaf for 30, 33 years. I said, Dr. Frank, that's Yashua. He stuck his finger in this man's ear, used his acupressure techniques, and restored the man here, and the man called him. He said, you're Jesus. You are Jesus. Frank said, I am not Jesus. I'm not going to take credit for that. I just know I've learned the techniques of healing with my hand. Because where did that come from? Yahshua. Yahshua would touch you and you be healed. Because Yahshua invented the healing in the hands where you could touch. If you ever get a headache, you just take your thumb and press down on this pressure point right here and it'll stop hurting. Why? Because our body's connected. Isn't the tabernacle all connected? Mm -hmm. It's all connected. All you got to do is research this stuff. All this stuff is on the chart. Start researching it. I came here before. 
We done read Exodus, the 12th chapter, and the 26th verse a million times where it said that they took the blood and dipped it in a bunch of hyssop. Mm -hmm. not, not one of us in class, and I can't speak for everybody, but the people I know, not one of us thought about the fact, let me look up hyssop and see what it does. I looked up hyssop. I said, oh, this can help me breathe. This got all these health benefits. It helps, you know, I'm like, so I'm, I keep it in my purse. I went to a party. I said, I got hyssop and myrrh in my purse. He said, you got hyssop. Who comes to a party, Valencia, with hyssop and myrrh from the Bible in their purse? Because Yahweh is show. That's very unique. I said, oh yeah, I keep my hips off the myrrh, frankincense, all of that. It's in my bag in case I need it for something. Because Yahshua showed me this. He put, this is what I'm telling you, when I walked in here 30 years ago, this saved my life. And Dr. Kelly said, we should be shouting happy. This is the truth. And I done explored and went through my mind and learned all this beautiful stuff. And I apply it to my life. If I could just, just eat enough vegetables and fruit and not be tempted, the next time I come back here, maybe I'll be 170 pounds. <laughs> but I just, I'm so happy to be here. And I'm so, I'm so happy that Yahshua gave this gift to Dr. Williams to come and start these classes because you guys really get into the nuts and bolts. I watch from Chicago, and whatever I can do to continue to help you guys, we found you another space, and I'll continue to look for more spaces because this is so needed. It's very healing, and it's so important. But I, whatever you take with you, just take these principles and take this information and just apply it to your life. When I go out, when I'm going to shop, I'm like, Yashua, do I look cute in this dress? You know, I'm talking to him all the time. We have a conversation. That's my husband, my friend. And I'm not going to let nobody disrespect him. These people having all these events, they just throw stuff together and it's a mess and all that. You know, that's not, he is the king of kings. You can't do that. You, you should be treating him like royalty. And don't just go to him when you want to need something. Ask him how he's doing. I get up sometimes and say, well, Yashua, how you doing today? How you feeling? I throw him a birthday party every year. I teach, and it's preaching the gospel because his birthday is every same. But it's like I want to always make sure that I'm not using the Holy Spirit, that I care about the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit feels. That may sound ridiculous to some people. But if Yahshua lives in, in, in us and we're human, how would you feel if people only came to you when they wanted something? And don't care about what you want and how you feel. Yahshua was here first. If that don't feel good to you, do you think it's going to feel good to him? I mean, can you imagine Yahshua just in the universe and every five seconds, oh Lord, oh Jesus, oh God, oh Yahshua, please, I need this, I need that. Can you do this? Can you pay the bill? Can you do this? And not one person say, Yahshua, how you doing? When, start doing that. Start getting up in the morning saying, hey Yahshua, how you doing? Oh, I see the sun is shining. You feeling okay? Are you going to make it rain today? What you going to do? Start, start feeling him like that and watch miraculous things in your life come into your life and miracles just start happening out of nowhere because you took the time to ask him and to talk to him like he's your friend, like you care about him. I care about Yashua. I love him. And I'm not going to let nobody disrespect him or I will fight tooth and nail for this gospel. I'm always in it with headquarters. I will take a sword, I will go right, and I'm going, I'm going to go visit that class. Because that's where I started, I'm going to go down there. And I'll sit there and listen. If they call me, I'm going to preach what I preached. And I'll walk out the door. Because somebody will hear the truth. And even if I'm just there, my presence is the truth. I am the truth. Because Yahshua lives in me. You got to know he lives in you. You got to know that you are Yahshua. 
And don't let nobody tell you that you're not. Don't let advertisements of McDonald's chicken nuggets get in your head and they not telling you, oh, this is made with bleach. I'm using as a parable. Don't let this stuff get in your head. I don't care what it is, COVID, all that stuff. Don't let it get in your mind. There is not anything that Yahshua cannot fix. Keep that in mind. Know that he lives in you and spread this good news. Share the links with people. Find a free, free websites or free posting uh, websites where you can share the link. Let's fill this place up. Let's get people in here. And we have a lot of people that watch online. Online, is, that's wonderful. There's people sitting there, they're looking at us now. They could be in Australia, Africa. Getting this gospel. Dr. Kenley said that he wanted this gospel out to the 3.5 billion people on the planet. That was in the 60s. It's 8 billion now. In movies, in film, and television. That's what Dr. Williams is doing. That's what we're doing. We're trying to continue this legacy of Yahshua, the Holy Spirit. I thank you guys for your time and attention. I love y'all. We're going to celebrate when it's over. I got cake, I got samples, I got fruit. And I just love y'all. And I just want to thank Yahshua for giving me this wonderful information, this miraculous information that is saving souls. Because Yahshua's in the business of saving. Listen, let me tell you something. Yahshua's saving every soul. Mm -hmm. It's just he's saving some for righteousness, and he's saving some for unrighteousness. And you better know where you're going. This is supposed to prepare you for your afterlife. And I'm telling you something, I've communicated with folks that got out the body, and they all say the same thing. As soon as you get out, you know who Yahweh of and Yahshua is. He will give you that. But if you didn't believe, the scripture says, if you don't believe that this Holy Spirit in the flesh got on this cross, and died, that's the only image you should have about this, that he died for you to have salvation. Other than that, you should see life. If you don't believe that, you ain't going to get it. And you just can't only believe it. you got to live by the gospel. You can't come in here and listen to this and preach and then go out in the world and do all kind of crazy stuff. Because your test is not in here. It's when you walk out that door. Keep that in mind. Know that Yahshua, you are Yahshua. He lives in you. Apply these things to your daily life. And share the good news. And with those words, I want to thank everyone for tuning in and watching. Carlita, happy 30th anniversary. I want to wish the twins... Uh, Dion and Andre Kinley, Dr. Kinley's great grandsons, uh, today is their birthday. Also, one of my dancers, Gerald, uh, lost him 20 uh, some years ago. And I wore the blue eyeshadow, that's how I met. He would, do, he would always tease me about my blue eyeshadow. Today is his birthday, he passed in 2001. But I just always want to acknowledge, and those of you all, please continue to make donations to this class. We're going to be moving next week. Uh, they have Zelle, they have Cash App, they'll put all that information up there uh, because we're moving to another facility, which is a, it's smaller, but it's better because we could be able to do a little bit more there. But I want to thank you all for tuning in. We're going to have another speaker. Um, I'm just happy to be here. I love y'all. And with those words, I say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Plus, she is our PR person here, and she's very instrumental in getting us places to where we could uh, preach the gospel, you know. And also, uh, she has a nickname. They know her as Mother Diva. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, our next speaker <laughs> will be Dr. Will Williams.
Good morning, good afternoon, good evening class, wherever you may be. And once again, it's good to be here with you to learn more of this great and awesome, colossal, stupendous panoramic vision and revelation given to us by Yahweh Elohim. And I appreciate the previous speaker and what she had to say. We also appreciate her, her headhunting skills as far as giving us another place. And in fact, she got us this place. So until our welcome got one out here. <laughs> so, so we're moving, we're going to, we're actually moving to another city, this is Pomona, so we'll be in San Dimas, which is north of here, a few miles, in a little, I think it's cramp, but we'll, but we'll make do. We'll make work. He says he's going to make it work, I believe him. Okay. Um, we've only got about maybe half an hour left. Uh, I'm just going to open it up for yeah, any questions or anything, or anybody have any questions they want to talk about. Some I do want to talk about, but it's going to take more time, so I'll, I'll wait till next week because we've been on this history thing. Can you give us a teaser? Huh? Give us a teaser. Oh, well, see, that's <laughs> all classes are teasers because you can only stay so much, so much in two hours, and then we tell you, well, you got to come back. <laughs> Um, teaser. Have you have one. Yeah. Give her a mic. Or at least, yeah. Stand up. I'm going to reach over there. Yeah, I, I just, because I consider you a teacher. So I'm not. I'm just an instructor. Only Yasha was a teacher. Well, I just, you know, wanted to know if, if there was anything that I said that needed some correction or was on the point. Or okay, what, good. You know, so, since you brought that up, yeah. I'll I, I bring this out. Yeah. <clears throat> The whole God, because people used to say that the whole earth was the Garden of Eden. That is not true. No, I didn't say the whole earth was Garden. No, you said you said they were put into another part of the garden. No, that that's not true. Okay. They were kicked out of the garden. Look here, Dr. Kinley put it right here, right here on the map. So they, let me say that if they were kicked out of the garden, they weren't like in an area that still had trees and plants. Yeah, but it, but it, but it wasn't the Garden of Eden. I didn't say that. No, no, you said they were. You said they were put into another part of the garden. Okay. That's what you said. Okay. okay. And I'm saying they were kicked out of the garden. Well, what yeah, the mean? earth is still got you know. Yeah. My point was they were still near plants and trees. Well, actually, it didn't matter because when they got kicked out, they got kicked into the outer darkness. Right. That's true. <laughs> they got kicked to the outer darkness. Okay. So I mean, yeah, see, yeah, thorns and thistles was out here. There wasn't no thorns and thistles up here, right. but thorns and thistles are out here. Okay, well, I, I could take correction. <laughs> okay. Yeah. See, because people used to say that, oh, the whole earth was the Garden of Eden. No, it wasn't just one little spot here. And that's why Dr. Kennedy drew it like that right here. In fact, if you go and do the research, you'll find there's a little island here because this is where the Persian Gulf is at. See? Now, they, I, I, I got a documentary where they showed you know, the, the land, how it was maybe thousands of years ago, because they tell you that four rivers came out of here. Two of the rivers are identified up here, the Tigris and the Euphrates. Mm -hmm. See, but when you do the, the, the satellite research and the scanning, you know, they'll find out, you will find out there's two other rivers in this area. Okay. See, because four rivers came out of this, this Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. Okay? And see, and that's the thing that uh, a lot of people will look at, because they, they don't think of the Bible as a history book. You know, they think it's a book of myths and things like that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but when they do the archaeological research, see, like for example, there were people that actually thought that like, the David and Solomon were myths until they actually did the archaeological research and found the coin from that era, mm -hmm. see. And so, the, and, uh, and, and the whole idea like, uh, like, like a, a, a great flood, like with Noah, a great deluge, the flood, story, the flood story is in practically every culture. It's just got different names, situations, but every culture pretty much has a flood story. What we say, tell you, is that the, the story is in the scriptures, the Bible. That's the true rendition, see. And I remember in the lecture where Dr. Kennedy talked about the Noah's Ark. And see, it was in an, it's in an, it's in an ice glacier in, uh, in Mount Ararat. 
So the ice is broken in half, see, and, 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 but they can't get to it because it's on the borderline between Turkey and right. Russia and yeah. all. And, and see, and the Muslims, see, they really don't want you to fight it because they say, well, it's really on another mountain over here. <laughs> see, <laughs> see, if you were to go there and really did verify that it was there, then that would kind of put a chink in their little doctrine, okay, see. But, um, but that didn't answer your question. Yes. Right? Yeah, see, yeah. see the, the thing of it is, Adam and Eve here, you see, they, it was just these two. And, and like you said it best, you said, you know, they were working, you know, like she's the mother of all women. Okay, all right. Um, gosh, I only got a little bit of time. I really, I want to get into something, but I know I can't finish it, and I, and I hate doing that. But uh, maybe I could do something right quick. Um, no, I'll tell you what. We'll just, um, we'll just give you a little lesson. We'll give you a little lesson on the pattern, on the pattern. And I want plate, uh, and, and my favorite plate to, to go with is, I think it's 30, see, not 35, no, 29. I think it's 29. And see, the tabernacle is uh, it's, it's where Yahshua's, uh, is this where Yahshua's uh, uh, baptism? Just to show the principles of the pattern. Okay, while they're looking for that, I'll just go through these principles right quick. As was brought out by the previous speaker about how, you know, you have this Ark of the Covenant here and these articles here, and these articles they compare to the physical body. You have it? Okay. All right. Uh, yes. Yes. The reason why I picked plate 29 because this is to me is one of the easiest plates to correlate, and I only got maybe like 20 minutes, and I think I can do this in 20 minutes. Uh, we're we're going to end about 12 if we can, two hours, if possible, maybe a few minutes over. Seven steps in the tabernacle pattern. Seven steps in the migratory pattern. First step. It's the gate compared to the door of the Israelites' houses. Right. Fulfilled by Yahshua and Messiah when he says, Enter ye in at the straight gate. Second step, altar of sin and sacrifice. Blood on the four horns of the altar. Corresponding with the four horns, with the four points of blood on the door here from the Paschal Lamb of the, of the, of the Paschal. See, that's compared to that. See, and that's compared to Yahshua and Messiah. See, when he's he is the sacrifice for us. See, with the nails in his hand, crown of thorns, the nails in his feet, four points of blood. Oh, but there's a fifth spot. Oh, I forgot about that. That's compared to the lamb, because they had to pierce the lamb and the sign and drain the blood, and no bones could be broken. Likewise with Yahshua the side. When the soldier saw him dead and was going to break his legs, he punched him in the side instead when he saw that he was dead. And I was came blood and water. All right, the third step is this brazen labor. The brazen labor is compared to the Red Sea. Okay, and it's compared to the Red Sea. And it is Joshua's side. He is, he is the true washing of regeneration, the Holy Spirit, that is. Okay, then we have the door here, which is the fourth step, which the cup of holy anointing oil was put onto the priest here. And that would be like the cloud here. See, they were immersed in the cloud and in the sea, baptized unto Moses. Going through the miraculously divided waters of the Red Sea, all right, which is like the door. Yahshua himself said, I am the door, I am the life. Okay, and he's fulfilling that. Mm. Then the fifth step is this whole holy place where you have the golden lampstand, golden table of shoe bread, golden altar of incense. Or succinctly put, light bread intercessor. Mm. And that's compared to the holy place of the migratory pattern where this phenomenal cloud that led them was a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, so they were always in constant light. They had manna from heaven, right. right? And they had that intercessor there with the Holy Spirit in Moses, you could use that as an intercessor, or that angel which was in the cloud that led them, who was really Joshua, son of Nun. He was the intercessor between Yahweh and man, all right? And that's fulfilled by Joshua the Messiah. See, when he says, I am the light of the world, I am that bread, see? And I am the mediator between Yahweh and man, okay? 
Sixth step is this blue, purple, and scarlet veil. All right, this veil separates the holy place from the most holy place. All right, and that's compared to the Jordan River over here. The Jordan River separated the wilderness of Sinai from Canaan's land, and it was rent or divided so that the Joshua and the new birth that was out here could go across. That's fulfilled by Yahshua Messiah, by his veil. See that it said his flesh was the veil at sea, and when he, on the uh, death, burial, resurrection, the veil in the temple rent in twain, all right, to show forth that just like the Jordan River, it divided in twain, all right. The seventh step is this whole holy, is this uh, Ark of the Covenant with the two archangels on top of the mercy seat. In it you had the second tables of stone that Moses had with Elohim wrote in. Um, Aaron's wife that butted into almonds and a pot of manna. And that's compared to Canaan's land seat, more specifically to Solomon's temple, which was a porch, a sanctuary, and an oracle. Each level was on a gradating ascent with the oracle on the top. In other words, it, this temple looked like a man sitting on a throne or a seat of authority, which is what this Ark of the Covenant was when the cloud filled this temple, this tabernacle rather, and was sent between the two archangels. All right? And this is where the seat of authority, this is what governed all of Israel when they were out here in the wilderness. Now, you can elaborate as much as you like, but I'm just trying to draw out the principles so that when you look at this, See, these seven correlations between these two plates are the same correlations you're going to use on all these plates. All right? So now, uh, here we go. So now, if you would go to Matthew 3, 13. Over... <clears throat> Thank you. I was going to ask. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, we just have a little time, so we're going to kind of go through this a little quickly, I think. But, but just so that you can see the principles here of the pattern in operation. Yes. All right. Matthew three and thirteen. Before you read that, read. Uh, Exodus 12 and 1, right quick. I know, I know, I know. It's, it's short time. But we're just going to just walk through this right quick. Right. Exodus 12 and 1. Uh -huh. And Yahweh spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year mm -hmm. to you. Now, see, now, this might be funny because we're almost, we're almost at April now, April mm -hmm. the 1st, you know. Mm -hmm. The month that you know that the Hebrew year began upon, okay? and, and for some reason they call it April Fool's Day. I right. uh, wonder why. Yeah. But continue. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, mm -hmm. In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb mm -hmm. according to the house of their fathers, mm -hmm. a lamb for a house. Mm -hmm. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his house take it according to the number of souls. All right, good enough. Now, I just want to have that read a little bit to show that this is what was instituted down here in Egypt. And Yahshua is fulfilling it here because he is a prepared sacrificial body. Okay? Uh, Matthew 3.13? No, keep reading that because there's a part I want you to read out of there about when they're going to kill him. Keep going. You read, you're reading out the holy name? Yes. Keep going. Let him and his house take it according to the number of souls. Mm -hmm. Every man according to his eating shall make you count for the lamb. Mm -hmm. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Mm -hmm. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. Mm -hmm. And ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day mm -hmm. of the same month. Mm -hmm. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it between the two evenings. All right, now that's the reason why I asked her that it was in the Holy Name. Because see, in the King James Version, it doesn't read like that. See, in the, in the Holy Name, it reads, killed between the two evenings. It was taken out on the 10th, held over to the 14th, and killed between the two evenings. The time between the two evenings is 12 o'clock noon. Because that's when he was on the cross. See, that's when, it, when he was on the cross at 12 o'clock, it started turning dark and, and life was beginning to ebb from his body. See, and that's reflected here. See, he's a prepared sacrificial body. So now he's drawn out, talking about Yahshua, 
with the blood warm in his veins, he's going to be held over for three and a half years. Get it? Just like the lamb was held over for three and a half days, he's going to be held for three and a half years. Okay? A prepared sacrificial body, marked for death. All right? Now, go, now you can go to Matthew. Matthew 3 and 13. Mm -hmm. Then cometh Yahshua from Galilee to Jordan unto John mm -hmm. to be immersed of him. Mm -hmm. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be immersed of thee, mm -hmm. and comest thou to me? And Yahshua answering said unto him, Permit it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Okay, so now he's he's baptizing him. See, why? Because, see, the Israelites were baptized in the cloud and in the sea. Uh, oh, she needs some help. I need another scripture reading. I need 1 Corinthians 10 and 1. First Corinthians 10 and 1. Mm -hmm. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all immersed unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, mm -hmm. and did all eat the same spiritual food, mm -hmm. and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock, rock that led them. Mm -hmm. And the rock was the Messiah. All right, so now they were baptized in the cloud and in the sea unto Moses. Here's Joshua baptized in the river in the, and, and in the cloud that's gonna come up. Unto John, see, which is a fulfillment of them being baptized under Moses because John was from the tribe of Levi, right. just as Moses was from the tribe of Levi. All right, now go back to Matthew. Okay, Matthew uh, 3 and 15. Mm -hmm. And Yahshua answering said unto him, mm -hmm. Permit it to be so now, mm -hmm. for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness, that mm -hmm. he permitted him. Read. Yahshua, when he was immersed, went up straightway out of the water, mm -hmm. and lo, the heavens were open unto him. Now the heavens were opened unto him. Why did the heavens open? Because the, the Red Sea back here opened. Right. That's a fulfillment of that. See, you're just looking at the elements that compare the Red Sea open. So now it's got to do something similar up here. Keep reading. And he saw the spirit of Yahweh descending like a dove. Uh -huh, spirit. Go ahead. And lightning upon him. Spirit like a dove. Why? That'd be like that cloud back here. See? They followed that cloud. See, that's a type of spirit. Just like the dove here. It's a type of spirit. Continue. And though a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son, mm -hmm. in whom I am well pleased. Read. Then was Yahshua led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the adversary. Mm-hmm. And after he had fasted 40 days. Not, now he fasted 40 days. Why 40 days? Because the Israelites were out here in the wilderness of Sinai 40 years. What do you mean? Well, if you remember the story of the 12 spies that, that were sent up here in the Canaanite to spy out the land. Two came back with a favorable report. The other 10 came back with a not so favorable report. So Yahweh punished them a day for a year for the time that they spied out the land, which took 40 days. Right. So he punished them a day for a year, and they ended up being here in the wilderness 40 years. Here's Joshua in the wilderness of Judea fulfilling that a day for a year. He's out here 40 days. Okay, go ahead. And 40 nights he was hungry, mm -hmm. and then the tempter came to him and said, If thou be the son of Yahweh, command that these stones be made bread. Now, see, now, here's, now, now he's talking to him, and he said, Look, now, you know, you be be the Messiah, well, command that these stones to be made bread. And look, I, I used to grow up, in, I grew up in church, I knew this story, because every church person knows this story. And see, and I never knew what these stones were. See, these stones were not just some ordinary rocks laying around. See, get Joshua, I think it's Joshua 4 and 1. Right. Okay. Quickly, how much time I got? About 10 minutes or so? Okay, so, try to get this. Four yes. Okay, we'll do that. Well, well. Okay, this is Joshua four and one, Holy Name version. And it came to pass when all the people were clean. 
passed over Jordan, mm -hmm. that Yahweh spake unto Joshua, saying, Take you twelve men out of the, of the people, out of every tribe of man, and command ye them, saying, Take you hence out of the midst of Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood firm, twelve stones, mm -hmm. and ye shall carry them over with you, and leave them in the lodging place where ye shall lodge this night. Okay, now they took twelve stones out of the middle of this river, and they placed them out here, see, I'm just cutting it up. See, they became a landmark. Mm -hmm. This was the, see, this was to mark the spot where they crossed over. Right. Now the point I'm making is, these are the same stones over here that Satan is telling Joshua to turn the bread. There's, you can see there, see the spot that Joshua was baptized in is the same spot that the Jordan River divided for the Israelites to go across. Wow. And those stones uh, uh, mark that spot. Uh, jump down where it says, what mean it, you know, when they, when they say, what mean it these stones? Should be like a couple of verses down. Seven, eight, somewhere. Seven. Six. 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 Okay, then that may be a sign among you mm -hmm. that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, mm -hmm. saying, What mean ye by these stones? Mm -hmm. Then ye shall answer them that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. When it passed over Jordan, mm -hmm. the waters of Jordan were cut off. Mm -hmm. And these stones shall be for a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. All right, so it should be a memorial. Now here Satan is trying to get Yahshua to change these stones to bread. Mm -hmm. If he had changed the stones to bread, it wouldn't be a memorial anymore. See, yeah. see, he's trying to make Joshua break Yahweh's commandment. Right. See, see, that's how that's how devious he is. Yes. You know? See, he's like, oh, you hungry? Oh, there's some stones here. Let me turn up the bread. <laughs> oh no! But read uh, Matthew. Where you at, Matthew? <laughs> Matthew three and twenty-one. Um, Sixteen. Oh no, three and seventeen. And lo, a voice from heaven said, saying, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Uh -huh. Then Yahshua led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the adversary. Mm -hmm. And after he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was hungry. And then the tempter came to him and said, If thou be son of Yahweh, command that these stones be made bread. Mm -hmm. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of Yahweh. Continue. Then the adversary taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle, a pinnacle of the temple, mm -hmm. and saith unto him, If thou be the son of Yahweh, cast thyself down. For it is written, mm -hmm. he shall give his angels charge concerning thee to guard right, that's thee not, in all thy ways. Now, see, Satan is quoting the scriptures to, to the one who wrote the scriptures. See, he said, well, you know, you wrote this. And what, isn't it written that they will do that? Satan, look, Satan is well-schooled in the scriptures. Not only is he well-schooled in the scriptures, but he's well-schooled in the Koran, the Upanishads, <laughs> the Rig Veda. I Ching, Confucius, uh, anybody that you can think of, he can quote to you, you know. You know, well, what about the book of Satan? He can, well, he can quote that to you too. I was Alice to Crowley, you know, I mean, he can quote anything you want. See? So it's no so it's no thing for him to quote scriptures to the man who wrote the scripture. But read. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, mm -hmm. lest any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Mm -hmm. Yahshua said unto him, It is written again, mm -hmm. Thou shalt not tempt Yahweh thy Elohim. Read. Again the adversary taketh him up into the exceeding, exceeding high mountain, mm -hmm. and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world. Okay, now you say showed him all the kingdoms of the world. This is kind of tame right here, so we're going to show you a more grandiose. See, the kingdoms of the world, here they are right here. Here they are, right? All the kingdoms of the world. See, all the way going back to the city of Enoch, Tower of Babel, 
Nebuchadnezzar, Medes and Persian, Alexander the Great, pagan Rome, papal Rome, you know, he showed them all their grandeur and their glory and said, Lord, I'll give this all to you if you just bow down and worship me. You know, not, you know, maybe you didn't realize, but it was, how did you get them? <laughs> Say, how did you get these kingdoms? Was it, was it not Yahweh that allowed you to do these things, these kingdoms? All right, but go ahead. And the glory of them, mm -hmm. and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Mm -hmm. Then saith Yahshua unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, mm -hmm. for it is written, Thou shalt worship Yahweh thy Elohim, mm -hmm. and him only shalt thou serve. Read. Then the adversary leaveth him, and behold, the angels came and ministered unto him. And ministered, why did they minister unto him? Wasn't there an angel back here that ministered under Moses? Right. That was Joshua's son of Nun. Mo Joshua was Moses' minister. Right. See, everything Joshua's doing is in fulfillment of what's going on in this migratory track and the tabernacle pattern. And he's going according to the pattern in this fulfillment. Right. Continue. Now, when Joshua had heard that John was cast into prison, mm -hmm. he departed into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the sea coast in the borders of Zebulon mm -hmm. and Naphtali, mm -hmm. in fulfillment of that which was spoke by Isaiah the prophet, saying, mm -hmm. The land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan Galilee, mm -hmm. of the nations, the people which walk in darkness have seen great light. Okay, the great light. What do you mean? Where are we at here? We're in the holy place. We already got the bread. We got the angels ministering to them. That's an intercession. See, now we got the light. Because what's in the holy place of the tabernacle pattern? See, the light, the bread, the intercessor. You're just looking for the same thing here. The light, the bread, the intercessor. Okay, continue. And to them which dwelt in the regions of the shadow of death, mm -hmm. light hath shined upon them. Mm -hmm. From the time Yahshua began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Mm -hmm. And Yahshua, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, mm -hmm. and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. Mm -hmm. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Mm -hmm. And they straightway left their nets mm -hmm. and followed him. Read. And going on from thence, he saw two other brethren, mm -hmm. James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in a ship with Zebedee. And he called them. And they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. Now, why did they do that? They didn't, you know, I mean, if some guy, some stranger come along and say, follow me, I'd be like, who the hell are you? And why should I follow you? <laughs> you know? I mean, look, 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 like what? You know, you don't look too prosperous there, so I mean, <laughs> you know, why should I follow you? But see, but they did it immediately. Right. Why did they do that? See, because they followed that phenomenal cloud back here. Quickly get Exodus forty thirty four. Keep your place, because we're going to read it. But 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 yeah, uh, but get Exodus thirty four forty thirty four. See, because they followed that phenomenal cloud back here. Forty and thirty-four of Exodus. Then the cloud covered the tent of the congregation, and the glory of Yahweh filled the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. And Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation mm -hmm. because the cloud abode thereon, mm -hmm. and the glory of Yahweh filled the tabernacle. It filled the tabernacle. See, they they couldn't go in. Nobody could go in, but they filled this. The glory filled it. But continue. And when the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, mm -hmm. the, children of his, the children of Israel went onward in all their journeys. In other words, when the cloud moved, they moved. Right. Read. But if the cloud were not taken up, then their journey not till the day that it was taken up. So now, when the, when the cloud moved, they moved. When the cloud stopped, they stopped. They would have to, when the cloud moved, they would have to disassemble this tabernacle and the Levites were the, were the ones in charge taking these articles and the curtains and the boards and stuff and they would follow the cloud. My point is this is a fulfillment. 
when Yahshua tells Peter and Andrew, he said, follow me, and they just get up and do it, they're doing it in fulfillment of the cloud. Because when the cloud moved, the Israelites saw it, it was like, oh, the cloud's moving. Oh, oh the cloud's moving. Hey, come on, man, this, this is similar to follow the cloud. Because the cloud, when it moved in a in, Right. When the cloud moved, in effect, it was telling Israel, follow me. Mm -hmm. And they did. When the cloud moved, they disassembled this tabernacle and they followed the cloud. Okay. Just like these disciples followed Yahshua when he called them out. Go ahead and read Matthew. And Yahshua went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and mm -hmm. preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases among the people. Mm -hmm. And his frame went throughout all Syria. Mm -hmm. His fame went throughout all Syria. And they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with various diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with demons, and those which were lunatics, and those that were paralytic. Mm -hmm. And he healed them. And there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee and from Decapolis, mm -hmm. and from Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and from Judea, mm -hmm. and from beyond the Jordan. And from beyond the Jordan. Listen to that carefully, because see, the beyond the Jordan means on this side of the Jordan. So he, so Yahshua, to my Yahshua the Messiah, had great multitudes following him from beyond the Jordan, meaning that when he crossed the Jordan the, over here to Israel, they, those multitudes followed him with him. Right. Why? Because it's a fulfillment of Joshua the son of Nun. See, 603,550 came up out of Egypt, and they all died out here because right. of unbelief. But that new birth, 144,000, 12,000 from each tribe, they were born, and they followed Joshua, see, into Canaan's land, a, a multitude. Because when you read, I think it's Revelations, I think it's Revelations 6 and 9, I think it is. 6 and 9 says, and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw... 7, a 7, 7, I'm sorry, 7. 7 and 9? Um, After this. 7, uh, start with 4. Revelation 7 and 4. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, mm -hmm. and there were sealed 140 and 4,000. See, now that, num that number wasn't known back there, here, but John was looking back on from the Isle of Patmos. He's calling the number out of that new birth that followed Joshua in the Canaan's land. Right. Go ahead. Of all the tribes of the children of Israel, of the tribe of Judah. That's good enough. Go jump down. Now jump down to 9, 7 and 9. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man can number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne, and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and, and palms in their hands. Okay, good enough. Uh, uh, go ahead, Big Tim. And cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our El which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. All right, so now he said, now John's looking back and he sees, now I, you know, he saw the 144,000, right. he called it out, but then, but those were just the fighting men. But then he saw a multitude that no man could number. That's all of Joshua, the son of Nun, into Canaan's land. Joshua was fulfilling that by his healing. And he had multitudes following him from beyond the Jordan. And he's come, and just like Joshua, the son of Nun followed, you know, they followed him, these crowds followed Yahshua the Messiah. Keep reading, Matthew. Um, That's the last sorry. verse of that chapter. <laughs> um, Matthew chapter 5 now. And seeing the multitudes, mm -hmm. he went up into the mountains. And when he was set, his disciples came up to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor mm -hmm. in spirit. All right. Hold it right there. Now he's on top of a mount. Why is he on top of a mount? This is a fulfillment of Moses' first trip into the mount. Right. See, because Moses was getting instructions here from Yahweh saying, well, look, you've got to tell the people, hey, clean them up. Don't go against your wives for three days. Clean up. Put a border around this mount. Don't touch the mount. Don't let the animals touch it. And in three days, I'm going to speak to you. And this is when he thundered, Yahweh thundered down the Ten Commandment law. Okay? Now, you're in the fifth chapter. Get the, let's see. I'm, we're almost out of time, but we're almost finished. Uh, get five and 
Uh, 21. 5 and 21. Mm -hmm. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit murder, and whosoever committeth murder shall be in danger of the court of justice. All right, so now why is he saying that? He's fulfilling Yahweh speaking from the mount. Because Yahweh thundered down the Ten Commandment laws into their hearing. So in fulfillment, he's got to say something similar up here. Okay? Jump down to 27. 27. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, mm -hmm. Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. All right. Now, why is he saying that? Because that will, because that's what was said right. from the mount when Elohim thundered down the Ten Commandment law into the hearing of the Israelites. All right. One more scripture. Uh, 33. Again, ye have heard that it had been said by them of old time that thou shalt not swear to a lie, but shall make as unto Yahweh thine oaths. But I say unto you, swear not all, neither by heaven, for it is the throne of Yahweh. All right, good enough. See, so now his conversation here on the Sermon on the Mount has got to be similar to the conversation Yahweh had with Israel. Right. After Moses' first trip to the mountain, when he thundered down the Ten Commandment law. Now, there's a lot more we could have got into, you know, a little more persnickety, but I just wanted to at least show this, show the pattern right. in operation. See, show Yahshua fulfilling the scriptures right. by the pattern. See, all right? And see, and, and, and basically, this is what, <clears throat> well, I won't say that. See, look. Say well, people will say this. What is normal these days? And, and, my, and my, my thing is, who's to say what is normal? See, well, that, you know, like was brought out about, let's say, the homosexual community. You know, because well, you know, I had people tell me, well, they're normalizing homosexuality. I said, well, first of all, what is normal, what is not normal, see, in, in this sense. Because Alexander the Great, who conquered the world, was a homosexual. <laughs> okay, he was a homosexual. So, so when he was so, so when he was ruling of the world, it was normal. <laughs> you get it? Tell the truth. It was normal. And see, if somebody said, "Well, you know what? We don't want this." Okay, but well, let me tell you something. Slavery was normal at one time in this country. You want to go back to that? I don't. <laughs> so, what is normal? Human government. That is not normal. See, that's that's what. The man has come up right. with it. See, and maybe we'll get into it in our future lessons when we talk about the law of the spirit versus science of mind. See, because this is what Dr. Kenley said about the science of mind. He said that mind is subject to change, come on. either for better or for worse. Well, if that be the case, then human government is a reflection of that. Yep. It's subject to change. Either for better or for worse. And look, everybody is not going to agree on what is better or worse, or normal or not. To some people, oh, this is great. Whereas other people say, no, it's not. See? And somebody in an election comes and a new person comes in, oh, this person's terrible. Whereas another person will say, oh, no, this is great. <laughs> See? So you're not going to get... You're not going to get a consensus on any of that. And see, and again, if human government is a product of the human mind, then it's subject to change. See? Simple as that. Whereas the kingdom of Yahshua Messiah, it never changed. Why? Because it's after the order of Melchizedek, king and high priest of Salem, who had no beginning or any of days. So this kingdom doesn't have any beginning or any of days. Talking about the kingdom of Yahshua. Whereas human government, hey, tomorrow we could be living in something else in another kind of rule, and it may last for a minute, and then somebody else come along and say, nah, we don't like this, we're going to kick this out, we're going to try this. And, then that's, and that's what you see. You have all these different kinds of rules that they tried. See, you have authoritarian rule, you know, you know, God-like rule with Nimrod, because that's what he thought he was. Same way with Nebuchadnezzar, we went through him last time, you know, when he... Uh, he built a statue from the image, from the dream, and thought, oh, look what I did. See, the Medes and the Persians, the Greeks, you know, Alexander, they, they come up with democracy. 
you know, try that. These people, paper pagan Rome, they came up with the idea of a republic. Then you got the papacy here, well, they, we went through that, you know. They're, they're just king and high priest. Then we got England over here, you know, they tried their form of empire, and the United States was an empire. Right. You know, not so much in land, but economically we are, you know, the United States is. So everybody has tried their different versions of empire and, and government and stuff like that, and none of them has ever worked successfully. Or worked to a point where, you know, I mean, are we under this government now? No, this government's gone. This government's gone, this is gone, this is gone. You know? Until somebody comes along and says, well, well, let's try this, but it'll never work. Never can't, because it's from the human mind. Right. And the human mind is subject to change. Either for better or for worse. And in most cases, worse. <clears throat> All right, we're out of time. Um, we appreciate uh, the support we've gotten. You know, for, you know, we've been, you know, we've been around as an organization for two years, and so we appreciate the support we've been getting. Um, as we're flying out, this is our last day in this hotel. We're going somewhere else. Uh, hopefully, it's a little better. We'll, it won't be on the fourth floor anymore. We won't have the beautiful mountain scene anymore, you know. But but we'll but we'll be on the first floor of the flat level. We'll be able to store our stuff there. And, you know, and it's not it's not easy. It's easy to get to from the highway. So we we hope Yahweh will well just continue to bless us, you right. know, and, and we hope to grow as an organization. And we and we invite you to come and visit. You know, right. we'll, we'll let you know where we're at. We're in San Dimas. We'll. I know most of you probably never heard of San Dimas, <laughs> but it's just north of, north of here. Um, I don't know, anything else I need to say, y'all? Uh, something I'm, I'm missing, I feel, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Okay, um, trying to think. All right, uh, once again, thank you very much for watching, and we hope that you were edified by the things that you heard today. And as always, in closing, be safe, be healthy, but most of all, be in Yahshua the Messiah. Why? Because he truly is your only hope of glory. And with those few words, hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. All right, thank you for that. Uh, after we'll have some cake to celebrate uh, Dr. Denzler's. Uh, how many years? 40 years? 30 years. 30 years in being in this teaching. Okay, uh, our new address will be, it's in San Dimas. It's uh, 301 East Arrow Highway. Unit, unit 101, San Dimas, California, 91773. All right? And I'll be posting it on uh, Saturday and Sunday at the invite. Okay, uh, call Annette up. What? Oh, to uh, uh, dismiss us. And thank you for uh, tuning in, Joseph Iles and those of uh, different countries. Let us all stand to be dismissed. I'll be reading the doxology from the last two verses of Jew. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim our Savior through Yahshua the Messiah our Sovereign belong glory and majesty dominion and power both before all time now and ever let us all say hallelujah, hallelujah.